Because basically, um, they only provide a bus pass to, and uh, we don't, in Orange County, we don't have great service. Like, it doesn't go everywhere, right? So the closest bus stop to me is, to my condo, is like a mile. So... I told them, you better keep me here overnight because uh, the paramedics did not grab my purse. I don't have ID on me. I don't have my credit cards on me. I have no ability to get out of this situation right now. And you intend to drop me off a mile from my home so that I can waddle my way back to my house? Oh, hell no. And so they needed to make sure that I could walk before I was discharged. So they did, I think, two or three mobility checks on me. They did a stroke check on me. They tried to see if I had diabetes, which I don't. And they asked me all sorts of things about my condition. And I'm like, literally, I've been treated for this for like two years. And it's an ongoing issue for me. So they um, broke protocol, which cool. Thank you. I appreciate you. And they called me an Uber and paid for it. They were probably eager to get the crazy drunk woman out of their hair. And the Uber driver was so cool that he actually walked me up to my front door um, and had me like hold his arm because I was still pretty unstable when like you know hospitals are not looking for perfection right so i was still in pretty piss poor shape when i got home but he um gave me his arm the whole way up my stairs and waited until i could open my door and get the fuck in and be done right he could probably tell that you're the type to leave bad ratings on the uber app he needed to go above and beyond in order to protect his livelihood i also had to change my clothes because i couldn't um stand on my legs right which meant i could not use their laboratory so they gave me this weird device that you stick by your hoo-ha and it sucks up the urine right but not entirely so basically the fleece and the underwear that i was wearing got saturated while i was doing this so as soon as i got home i had to clean myself up again and um put on new clothes right so you rode in the Uber with urine-soaked pants. I hope you left the driver a perfect rating. He likely had to clean and deodorize his back seat before picking up other customers. Did you at least apologize? It was a miserable night, guys. You know, I look at people like Foodie Beauty and she's like, I just don't want to fucking walk. You should be very fortunate that you can walk, Chantel. It is quite difficult for the rest of us. And um, your live stream, which I watched, um, I watched Pulpy Syntax tonight while I was trying to chill myself. You said, sodium's good for you. It's not good for you. It's good for me. I have a different health condition 
than you do. So stop coming to my channel. There is absolutely no proof that Foodie Beauty has ever been to your channel. This is just one of your ridiculous assumptions. Or maybe you are delusional, especially given the probable damage heavy drinking has done to your brain. And talking about what I'm eating when you cannot have the same things as me. I need to have the sodium because I'm low on electrolytes, right? Like I'm low on potassium. So these are things I need to ingest to bring those fluids back into my system. You do not have the same problem as me. Nobody has ever suggested that she has the same problem as you. God damn, girl. And they made me take this like fizzy potassium drink while I was there, which tastes way worse than the supplements I take. Yeah. I think I'm going to take like two a day for the next couple of days if this is going to be a continuous problem for me because I don't know how much the potassium deficiency is related to my leg collapsing. I, I, I really don't know. But I know that these are two health issues that I have. And um, I don't want to fucking sit in the ER. Especially next to somebody who sounds like they have COVID. Um, although the nurse who was attending me assured me. It was a male nurse. Um, he assured me that they already tested her and she did not have COVID. Even still, she probably had like fucking pneumonia. <laughs> I really don't need to be exposed to these types of things when I'm having leg collapses, right? You mean because your health is frail due to years and years of heavy drinking? And yet, while you live in constant fear of viruses, you dismiss the most obvious health detriments in your life. You continue with the heavy drinking, the chain smoking, and the drunk driving. And it's so scary. Like, when it takes that long to get out of a situation and you feel like there's no other... Like, I can't even reach over and turn off the water. Because I know if... I'm going to make that move, I'm going to end up on the floor. And I don't know how I'm going to get back to like my bedroom and get to bed. I, I just, I've fallen and I can't get up. If you don't get help to stop the drinking soon, you could end up in a long-term care facility. Clearly, in your current state, you cannot live alone safely. So that's what happened to me last night. I am back home. Um, I'm trying to get the adrenaline out of my system from having to do that. And um, that is your update on me. I made it. I'm not dead yet. When the emergency department physician checked your walking ability, did they notice your alcoholic gait? Did they mention that you appear to have cerebellar ataxia? Set. Oh, my God.